welcome to Chiltern Heritage Orchards and we're putting new trees in today and what you're going to be learning is the pitfalls of planting apple trees in organic orchards with sheep present. So these are stakes that I'm using, they're 16 mil rebar, very strong lifetime guarantee. When you finish using them, pull them out, move them onto the next tree. So once you've bought them, you've got them. Very important to have a good stake because once they snap, very hard to replace it particularly if you've got grazing animals. Next thing we need to do is to mark out the area that we're planting. So I've been using a tape measure and I've worked this out to be three meters within the row and one and a half between the row. Quite close spacing and the rootstocks are 111 and 106, but they're center leaders, they're cordon trained, we should be fine. It's quite windy here, so the lats is a windbreak as well. Let's start this off and you need a long spade. Use a drain spade, a metal drain spade, something very strong which you can get online or a builder's yard. And get all the hole cleared out, all the roots. There's brambles in here, but the soil's pretty good. There's some stones further down and that'll all come out with the bar. And then I'll show you how to dig the hole properly. This is the best tool to get all the rubble out the ground. It's a digging bar. Watch the top because sometimes it hits your head and that, that really hurts. So put it in, lift it, take a while, let the bar do the work for you and it will get out all the rubble. And what you definitely don't want are roots and bits of rubble. This is the only time you'll ever get the chance to get underneath where the tree is going to grow and get the soil prepared. Once the tree's in, that's it. So whatever you leave in there will stay there. Okay, so I'm digging out the hole now with a, a bigger spade, long handled. And what you'll notice, I'm not putting in compost. I'm not putting in manure. I'm not even putting in wood chip or mulch when I plant. This ground's pretty good. It's got a lot of organic material in and it's alive. It's full of bacteria and fungi. And they're the real secret here. So what I'm gonna do is put a little bit of rock dust in, which is volcanic has all the trace elements, no nitrogen. We don't want any nitrates at this stage, no nitrogen. And the friendly fungi, which will latch onto the roots and start the whole process off, which I'll explain later. So let's have a look at what's in this planting hole. If you look through what we've got here, we've got pieces of material we don't want, pieces of old concrete, bits of root, more stones, we definitely don't want that. And if you look carefully into this hole, you can probably see right at the bottom, there are a few flints, just a few nestling in there. They're not a problem. The side of the hole, that, that shows me we've got quite a deep topsoil here. That's the, the level that the roots will grow in. Below that, we're into subsoil, which is okay. It drains here, it's pretty good. The top is organic level. That organic level is much darker and you can see how it stains down into the soil, probably about 15 centimetres, six inches into the ground. So when we plant, we put all the good soil back, all this lovely crumbly earth, brick earth, beautiful clay, and we'll put in some rock dust and we'll put in some friendly fungi. Okay, this is Ribston Pippin on M25 rootstock. It's the most vigorous rootstock that we have in the orchard. And a lot of people are frightened of it because it can produce a very large tree. But if you're careful with it, you can actually get a lot from it. And we find here, it's a great windbreak rootstock. So what you'll get here is a tree that's probably five meters high eventually, very strong, very drought tolerant, which is important because we don't irrigate um, hand water occasionally when, they, when they're young and that's it. So I've taken the label off and I put it on the stake. I can't plant the tree yet because first thing that has to go in is a volgard. The vole guard is important here. We have two voles, we have the bank vole, we have the field vole. And they love living under the trees, love eating the trees. And if you don't do anything, they will destroy your orchard. It's the same in the US. So this is a trick that's used a lot in the US. We use it here. We put galvanized mesh in. That will make all the difference. 
it'll stop the voles getting at the roots and luckily it will allow the tree to grow through it and eventually it will degrade. It's non-toxic, zinc coated mesh, doesn't do any harm and in fact a lot of trees arrive, they're root balled, wrapped up in it and it works really well. So that's the first thing to remember, put your vole guard on, cut it with tin snips before you do anything else. Make sure there's enough overlap to cover the roots at the top and that will be a good protectant. At some point I'll show you a vole burrow where the voles have got in and what they get up to. So pick out your rocks, you don't want rocks. At the bottom of the planting hole, pick a few pieces which came from the top. See how much darker that soil is, different colour. Now that's full of friendly fungi, that's full of mites, it will scrape the roots let the fungi in, help you establish your tree. So pack a few of those in, not too many. Crumble the soil down as you put it in. Pick through, throw the rocks to one side. I usually put them in a pot, keep them for something else. Usually filling up holes. It's all useful. Crumble the soil. Make sure you've got plenty of soil before you start. We're not adding any manure. We're not adding any compost. We're just using what we've got here which is perfect really, good soil. What we don't want is a high nitrate environment. Why is that? Well, that's because nitrates get into a plant and they don't get used up quickly. Within 24 hours, they build up. Once they build up, you get aphids, you get pests, and a lot of it turns into ammonium, and the ammonium builds up and that attracts moths, which you don't want. All the pests are attracted to high nitrate trees. We don't want that, we're organic. So we don't put that in. Put this in, this is rock dust, a small handful. It's volcanic, it's millions of years old. It's from basalt. It's full of trace elements. Cobalt, manganese, molybdenum, boron. Very important limiting factors for growth. Don't have them, trees don't grow. We always focus on the phosphorus, the nitrogen, the potassium, we forget about the trace elements. Usually the big limiting factor initially, scientists say, is manganese. There's plenty of that, but it's got to be converted into the right form. And that's done by the fungi, which I've just added. The fungi will help the tree get hold of the nutrients in the right state, the right oxidation state, actually. And then we put the tree in. Now you'll notice the hole has got quite a lot of soil in already. So the tree has to sit on top of that and it's got to be the right height. You don't want your tree to be too deep. Don't overplant your tree. Put the tree in too deep, the tree will rot at the collar. This is where the rootstock is. This is the join. You want this to be at the nursery level, just there. Remember, the tree will sink probably 10% easily in the ground. So put the soil around it. I'm doing it all by hand, and that way you can sift through the soil. You can work out what's stone, what's not get a good feel. Always wear gloves. Don't do any of this without gloves on. You see a lot of people not wearing gloves. They get very damaged hands and that's not what you want. So put all the soil in, a little bit more root grow on the roots. You don't need much, a little tiny bit and that should keep the tree happy. Right, we're going to put on the membrane. So when you do that, make sure you've crumbled in lots of soil. Use your fingers. As I say, wear gloves. Make sure you keep them protected. There's small amounts of roots at the bottom. We need a bit more soil to pack around those. All these roots are important. Without them, nothing works. So look after the roots, particularly on young trees. They build up in the soil. They pull in the bacteria. They swap the micronutrients, they build new roots, they bring out uh, waste products into the soil and the roots pump out the sugar that builds up the fungi. So there's a virtuous cycle that we want to encourage. And it takes a while, so you need to put everything in place to help it. Mesh goes over there like that. And make sure you don't leave any gaps because the voles will find a gap. They always burrow down, wrap it round nice and tight, push it in. They can't squeeze through that. Mice can, but mice are a less major problem here. 
Let me put this on. Now this is the weed control matting, but here it's not controlling the weeds much. What it's really doing is controlling the water supply. This is a passive system, so it doesn't require any intervention from me. I put it on and it will literally give me five weeks, up to five weeks of rain. It doesn't rain for five weeks, which is a lot of water. So the next trick is take the grass that you dug off the top, which is full of mites, full of nutrients, some grass roots, obviously. They will compete initially because the tree has got very small roots, so there will be some competition. The membrane helps to stop that. The more of it you put on, hold the mulch down, or the membrane down, the better. So remember not to build it high, so don't put it up high around the tree. You don't want to rot the tree. Cover the edges because the edges fray. We don't want any plastics escaping into the orchard. All this stays in the ground, doesn't do any harm. It will stay there and remain there for the tree. Okay, so I've jumped ahead a bit here. I've put the guard on. If you look carefully in there, there's also a collar and that's a vole collar. So that's in there because in the winter, if we get snow or we just get cold weather, the voles get very hungry, they're short of food. What they really love to eat is the side of your tree. And if they strip more than 50% round, they'll ring bark it, the tree will die within a year. So it's very important when you plant the tree, I'll show you on another tree, this collar goes on right down into the ground. Okay, so this is the mesh that I use. It's very strong mesh and what it will do is hold up the, the tree, but it will also, interestingly, stop the sheep and rabbits and deer. And voles are about a bit, but not much. So drop it over the tree like that, 1.5 meters high, five foot high, and I drop it on like that. Then what I need to do is to make sure the wires put through. And this is the clever bit. So when you get your wire, you get to the end, take a good length, and then make this shape with it. So there's a hook, like that, and like that. That's the shape you want, okay? And then what you do is pass it through the mesh. Hook it over. It's always difficult initially. Make sure you've got plenty to grip and then just feed it through like that. And then wrap it. Bear in mind, you'll probably have to undo this at some stage to do something. Prune the rootstock, take the side growth off, get at the tree.